This is a 3,600 square foot BSF facility that is situated in the heart of Ikorodu, Lagos, Nigeria. Now, this facility has over 1,600 square foot of insectarium that can produce over 4 kilograms of BSF eggs every single month. Now, that's not all. This facility can produce over 12 tons of larvae. That whether it's the Azola pond that we have or the 40,000 fishes that are stuck in this farm to the uh, plant that can produce up to two tons of feed in a day. There is so much you can learn from this video we are making in Tropical Tides Farm. And if you've not got to my book, Blast Your Fly Farm in 101, you need to get a copy. If you can't, it's just for 5,000 naira or five dollars if you're in diaspora. Just send me a message on WhatsApp and I'll hook you up with a copy, a digital copy for that matter. And if you want to get trained, you can write me on WhatsApp and I'll send you details on how to get trained, on how to get started with the Black Sugar Fly family. Yeah, that's it. Now this is one of the insectarium that we built. We have two of these massive insectarium that, I, that can produce, this particular one can produce up to 2 kg of BSF eggs in one month. Now, if you look closely, we already have our eggies. These are eggies, right? And if you look closely, we have spaces in between the eggies that will allow us to collect eggs from this fly. And if you're observant, you'll notice that we have uh, uh, sparkling lights from underneath this place, which is designed to attract the flies to come into this area and to lay their eggs, right? And I know you'll be wondering, what do we do with these cuttings? So these cuttings, this cutting wood that we have on these plastic containers, these trails, if you observe closely here, for example, you see that the flies, they are perching there, they are trying to uh, get hydrated from <clears throat> the, uh, the water that we put in there. So in, now in this water, we have a mixture of glucose and water to mix the glucose and water that's what we use here so as to boost the life span of the flies now these flies are expected to last for a couple of days between 8 to 12 days now with this uh, uh, setup here they can last a bit longer than that and that means we produce more eggs and if you look closely here we have a 100 watt bulb that keeps here completely illuminated we're making the sun in the night so whether it's in the night or in the day with this bright light here and with transparent roofing sheet that we have we keep having them mating all day long whether it's in the daytime or in the night and for these droppings this net that are hanging down is to enable the flies to have more places to perch on right in a couple of days we're going to have millions of flies emerge from this uh, poopers that we have on the ground they are going to emerge and here is going to be uh, it's going to be a lot of activities going on in this insectarium so the other things you should keep in mind when you're setting up your insectarium like this you should have uh, an hydrometer the hydrometer should help us to be able to know what is the humidity level of this insectarium and not just that to be able to monitor the temperature. If you look at this wire, you may be wondering where this wire is coming from. This is coming from the hydrometer. Okay, this is the probe of the hydrometer. This wire has been uh, coming in here. The hydrometer is outside. I'll show you the video, the picture of it. Now, this will be able to help us to take, read the temperature and the humidity level of this insectarium. And if you look closely what we've done here, there's an entrance, right? There's the first door and there's the next door. This door this place has a, a, a net and a zipper, which will allow, before you come in, once you come in, you shut the door behind, then you zip down, so as to ensure that a lot of the flies, they don't escape from the insectarium. That way, we can maximize our output of the BSF eggs that we're collecting. So, I think that's the most we can take for the insectarium. Now, in case you're wondering how I arrived at 12 tons of larvae for this my facility. Now, let me, let me do the simple mathematics for you. Now, on this uh, uh, rack that we have here, this uh, facility can take up to 20 of these. And we're going to build 20 of these within this place, right? Now, each, 
this entire rack is made up of seven racks. And we can also add one more rack in the future to make it eight. But let's start with seven. Now, each of the, the bays, right, can take 40 of these plastic containers, 40. 40 here, 40 here. So the seven rack will be 280. And if I get an average of one kilogram per plastic container, that will be 280 kilograms, okay? From this, and if you times, multiply 280 times, uh, 280 times 20, you get about 5,600 kg. That's what we can produce per harvest season. Now, you know in one month, we can have two harvest season. That's how I came about my 12 tons. Now, you know, depending on the, the amount, the kind of food I feed them, if I'm using the substrate like PKC and some other wonderful uh, organic material, I should be able to get a lot of larvae up to one and a half kilograms per plastic container. Look at it. So, if you want to do the biopond, you can do the vertical style. That way you don't have to deal with bioponds. It's easier to maintain, it's easier to clean, and so on and so forth. With it, that's how we can produce up to 12 tons of larvae in one month from this facility. I hope you get the point. Now, I want to talk about the basic, uh, some of the basic tools that you need to get in your farm when you are starting that. For example, if you have an insectarium and you want to be able to tell whether the weather is, is okay for the for the insect or not, you need to get what to call an hydrometer. Now, this is an hydrometer, right? So it will help us to, uh, to check our humidity and our temperature. Now, if the humidity is going above normal, this will read sand and alarm clock. This humidity comes with a probe that will help you to be able to check it. So the average temperature that is needed for healthy insect, the BSF uh, insect, the black soldier fly, right, is between, is between 26 degrees Celsius to 36 degrees Celsius. Anything below that or above that is not good for them. They may start dying or they may not mate and lay eggs. So you must keep that in mind. Why the humidity is between 40 to 80 percent. With this, you'll be able to tell that. Now, another thing you need to keep in mind when you are starting your BSF farm is you need to have what we call the thumb tack. That is a kind of pin that will help you to put spaces in between the eggies. These are called eggies. And you know we have different types of eggies. We have the carton type and we have this one. This one is the standard one we normally use. So these thumb tacks will allow you to put spaces in between the eggies so that the flies can have where to easily lay their egg securely. So if you want to collect the eggs, just gently remove your rubber band that are holding the eggies together. Okay. Now, this is the tool that I'm using to remove my eggs. Now, if you remove the eggs like this, you will notice that you have eggs laid on the edges like this and on the edges of the other side like this. Now, if, to remove the eggs, you just gently scrape it, gently. And gently scrape here and keep it in a plate so that you can take the, the weight later. If you want to, the wrong way of, of scraping this egg is doing it like this. If you do it like this, you're going to damage the eggs because the eggs are very fragile. You must keep that in mind when you are collecting your eggs. Now, to put the uh, the thumb tack that will ensure that we have spaces in between the eggs. You see the spaces? This is the space that the flies are going to lay their eggs. This space. That's where the flies are going to lay their eggs. So keep that in mind when you are setting up your eggs to collect. Another thing that you need to get in your farm is a digital scale. I'm not talking about the big one. This is the small one that measures in grams. Because for you to get, let's say, one kg of the larvae, you need at least 40 grams of the neonate. 40 grams of the neonate, you need to be able to measure it here. 
you put 40 grams of the neonate into a 1 kg of waste. Then after for 8 hours, you should introduce another 1 kg of waste into the feeding trail. Then another 24 hours again, you introduce another 1 kg until they grow to maturity, which will take place within usually between 10 to 14 days. So also keep that in mind. So other things that you also need to get is something like this to scrape the eggs out of the eggies and rubber bands to hold the eggies together. Now let's say we want to scrape our eggs out of these eggies, assuming that we have taken eggs, collected eggs, we we'll securely remove the rubber band and the eggs will be at this corner and at this corner. So you gently use your knife to remove it like this, gently. And you know that these eggs are very fragile, you don't want to damage them. You don't want to do it like this. If you do it like that, chances are the eggs will be damaged. Over time, you become a professional in removing eggs from the eggies. I like to use these wooden buttons or this wooden media as my egg is, as against using the cartons. Because if you are using cartons, you might not be able to reuse that carton after that time. But with this egg is, you keep using it over and again. So what I'm doing currently, I'm aerating uh, our feeding container. Now, in this farm, what we're, we, the method we're using to farm is the, is the horizontal method. The vertical method involves us using the bio pond, but in this facility, we're not using the bio pond. We're using plastic uh, trails or plastic containers. So I'm turning it to ensure that oxygen goes around these plastic containers. So all of these 54 plastic containers that we have here, we're able to achieve that with um, about 60 grams of eggs, okay? 60 grams of eggs, or thereabouts. So, in 24 hours, I will aerate them to ensure that they get all the nutrients out of the out of the substrate. I'll talk about the substrate that we normally I, I will normally recommend. Now, to achieve this particular result, we did the measurements so that we can have uh, accurate uh, results with what we're doing here. So the results we expect here, we, we used 40 grams of larvae, of 40 grams of neonates for one kg of waste. And in 48 hours, if we observe that they are done um, eating this substrate, we are going to give them another one kg. At that time, they would have grown bigger it's expected that within 24 hours they will be done uh, feeding on the one kg and we'll introduce another one kg. That way, in 10 days from this point, they would have grown to full maturity. So BSA farming is quite easy. As you are here now, I know you are not here in person, but those of us here, we are not perceiving smells, awful smell. And if you look at our drone shot, you see that there are houses around here and people would not even know what is going on. People who are passing by, they will think that this is a poultry. They will just be making assumptions. They wouldn't know what's going on here because there's literally no smell. So the substrate that we're using here, we're using PKC fermented with, uh, with uh, some poultry waste in addition. Somebody have asked me a question. You are using poultry waste as your substrate. What if the the beds, the beds who uh, uh, brought out the waste, what if they have sickness? Won't you be transferring diseases to the larvae and then to the end uh, users, which is uh, the beds or the livestock, whatever it is that are going to feed them the larvae? The answer is no, because once fermentation takes place, fermentation actually breaks down the waste into a form that um, these larvae can easily process. So that's the answer to that question. So what I'm doing right now, I'm aerating, I'm turning the substrate so that air can go in. As of this morning when I did aerate, aerate this uh, 
tray, they were a lot smaller, but now they've grown bigger. So one beautiful thing about the BSF larvae is that they can grow <clears throat> 50 times their, they can eat 50 times their body size in one single day. So that's how fast this can grow. So that's what we're doing here. We already have, uh, we already have them growing. So with this, I can estimate that I'm going to get one kg from each of the plastic container, a minimum of one kilogram. Yes, from each of these plastic containers. Like I'll tell people who are starting their own fish farm. Before you start your fish farm, you must at least have a BSA facility. And if you have the resources to have something like this, you should also get this kind of facility. Now, this is Tropical Ties Aqua Feed uh, uh, Farm. Now, this farm, this facility can produce up to 160 kg of processed feed every hour with uh, the mixer, the grinder, and of course, the dryer. And one of the major ingredients they use in their quality feed that they use in feeding over 40,000 fishes is the BSF larvae, which of course you know is extremely rich in protein. So what are you waiting for? If you're in Nigeria and diaspora, you're looking for ways to invest your money, you can give us a call. We'll call help you set up your own farm, connect you with the people who brought these machineries, and then you're good to go. You can start smiling to the bank as soon as as soon as possible, you know. If you have watched to this point, thank you so much for sticking around. And I'd like you to connect where you are watching from. I want to send two lucky people 20 grams of eggs uh, anywhere you are in Nigeria. Just connect where you are watching this video from. And I'll look for a way to send 20 grams of eggs to just two people. Now, if you need to buy people bar or you need to buy eggs or you need mentorship to get started with your own farm, Give me a call on the number on the screen or send me a message on WhatsApp. I'll be more than glad to send you the details on how to get started. So this is the most I can take in this video on how we have set up this farm. Give us a call if you need us to come help you set up your own farm and we'll be glad to come help you set it up. Whether you're in Nigeria or not, that's not a barrier. Distance is not a barrier. We can help you set up and you can start making tons of larvae, producing tons of larvae every single month to help subsidize the cost of feeding your feed. Do have a great day. Bye-bye.